Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, we have already discussed about dynamic recrystallization and uh, the microstructural part. Okay. In today's lecture, now I want to discuss about the stress and strain behavior as well as uh, how I can find out that critical strain or stress required for dynamic recrystallization. Now, we have already seen these micrographs, uh, oh sorry, these uh, st stress strain curve or flow stress curves. Okay. And uh, you can see when you have discontinuous dynamic recrystallization, the stress strain curve or the flow stress curve has this kind of uh, a peak okay? and then it comes down and more or less it becomes a steady state. Okay? And as a function of temperature, if you see the temperature is increasing, so flow stress is reducing. Okay? So, you can also see that this now hump or this peak is of kind of lower magnitude okay. and as you increase the temperature more, now you see something uh, uh, very interesting that now there are oscillation in the flow stress curves. Okay. There are oscillation in the flow stress curves. Okay. So, a characteristic feature if you uh, uh, want to define, it is basically a broad peak okay. and then the steady state flow and deformation at lower uh, z as zener holoman parameter we already know this uh, you will be look seeing the uh, multiple peaks okay so the lower z means strain rate either strain rate low or temperature high so the temperature effect you can see here the as temperature is, in, is increasing you have started seeing this multiple peaks okay similar behavior you may be able to see when you are reducing the strain rate Okay, so, with lower z, okay, always remember lower z means strain rate is low, temperature is high. You will start seeing uh, instead of one single broad peak, you will start seeing multiple peaks. You can also understand that for dynamic uh, discontinuous dynamic recrystallization to initiate, okay, we will require some critical strain. Okay. Now, I can just define a critical strain just before the peak st stress. So, peak stress is uh, where my this slope of this particular curve is 0. So, let us say this is my peak stress. Okay. Then the critical strain to initiate the, uh, the uh, dynamic recrystallization. You can understand that dynamic recrystallization is more or less complete here. That is why the flow stress has started decreasing after that. Okay. So, the dynamic recrystallization must have started initiated somewhere uh, at this point, okay. but we are not sure which this strain is right now. Okay. We will find out how I can find out that. Okay. Let us say that is some critical strain. Okay. So, one of the uh, objective of this particular lecture is to also find out this critical strain or critical stress. Okay. So, corresponding stress will be your critical stress to initiate the dynamic recrystallization. So, that we must know as an engineer that uh, what kind of strain I have to impose uh, in the material to start the dynamic recrystallization process. Okay. So, recrystallization kinetics if you see, uh, kinetics means uh, how fast the recrystallization after start, how fast it, it can complete. Okay. And usually it also follow the S shape curve as in phase transformation. Okay. So, if I kind of have the complete recrystallization here, zero recrystallization here as a function of time, it will have some behavior like this a S shape curve. Okay. So, the kinetics that, that means the time required to from start to finish okay, will be uh, will, will decrease with initial grain size. Okay. So, at higher deformation temperature, it will take lower time to uh, uh, complete the 
recrystallization process. Now, the nature of flow stress curve as we have just seen ok, at low stresses uh, as you have just seen ok that so stress and strain ok and you had this kind of multiple peaks ok, so this will happen at lower stresses or lower uh, z values. So, the first how this uh, multiple oscillation takes place that is what we want to explain ok. So, as you can understand that the flow stress increases as the dislocation density increases in the material ok. So, dislocation density is increasing and the flow stress is increasing because of that and when the recrystallization has happened now the grain size has refined and grains are relatively strain free ok that means the flow stress is flow stress will come down ok. Then the next cycle of the recrystallization will take place ok and you will have again a, a peak ok again the recrystallization is complete it will come down again the next cycle of recrystallization will take place ok. So, this repeated uh, change in dislocation due to due, due, uh, density ok increase and after recrystallization it will decrease ok give rise to this oscillations. Whereas, if you see the single one broad peak when you see ok. So, in this case what happens is that after the first recrystallization cycle ok before it completes ok the next uh, recrystallization cycle starts in the already recrystallized grains ok. So, you can you should understand that recrystallization from start to finish it has some finite amount of time or duration is there ok. So, if after let us say 60 percent of material has already recrystallized 30 40 percent is still remaining it is getting recrystallized. Suppose in this recrystallized the 60 percent recrystallized grains again the next cycle of recrystallization happens ok. So, then there is a continuous or the material will always be in the partially recrystallized condition ok. And because of that you will see after the first recrystallization and the drop in the stress you see more or less a steady state condition ok. Because of the at some part of the material there is always some recrystallization cycle is going on in some part it is uh, coming to end, in some part it is just starting already recrystallized, recrystallized grain are again starting to build up the dislocation density and getting into recrystallization mode at some other end already the recrystallization is about to complete and so on. So, it is a continuous uh, recrystallization or dynamic balance between recrystallized and unrecrystallized volume give rise to a steady state. Whereas, in oscillation after completion of one cycle the whole material gets recrystallized more or less then the next cycle again the dislocation density increases ok and then again the uh, recrystallization happen ok. So, at lower stresses this will happen that means, at lower strain rate and higher temperatures ok where the where, where you have uh, sufficient amount of time to build up the dislocations ok at higher stresses that means, higher strain rate and uh, lower temperatures you will have this one single broad peak ok and uh, there will be continuously uh, some recrystallization uh, must be happening at some part of the material. The other parameter is initial grain size larger initial grain size promotes single peak flow curve and the smaller uh, smaller initial grain size promotes multiple peak ok. So, there are two effect uh, for the stress and initial grain size. So, if you combine both ok in fact, you can divide them into two uh, regime here ok. So, on x y axis you can see the z parameter or you can also say in terms of flow stress as already we have discussed many times that my stress is a function of z and uh, on the x axis you have initial grain size ok. So, if initial grain size is more flow stress is low ok you will have single peak ok. If the initial grain size is small ok and my stresses are low or high ok you will have multiple peaks ok. So, you can divide these two deformation behavior 
into two regimes using uh, uh, the uh, idea of flow stress and grain size. Okay. And this is your demarcation line. Okay. Above this you will have single peak uh, curve, below this you will have multiple peak curve. Now, how to def determine the critical strain uh, for recrystallization in single peak flow stress curves? Okay. So, this is what we want to know that at what point okay, which is that critical strain where the uh, recrystallization has started okay. and because uh, you have to corroborate all these ideas with microstructure actually uh, we, we usually say that at least like 4 or 5 percent of material is recrystallized. So, that I can in a microstructure I should be able to identify that uh, yeah, some few grains have recrystallized. Okay. If the nuclei is very small, if you are not able to see through normal optical microscope or SEM, okay, then it does not make any sense. Okay. So, usually it is like around 5 percent or so recrystallization when it has happened, then we say that it has initiated. Okay. But we want to know this from the flow stress curves also. So, basically we want to know that what is the critical strain. Okay. Because right now, uh, I do not have any clear way of telling that uh, or whatever way I am telling is an ambiguous way that uh, from the slope change I am trying to figure out that okay, at this point somewhere the critical strain is reached and the recrystallization will take place. So, in general recrystallization, recrystallization starts when slope of the flow curve changes due to recrystallization strain hardening should decrease. Okay. So, when recrystallization happens, you have a strain free grains that means the strain hardening should uh, decrease. So, critical condition for initiation of DRX can be identified from the inflection point on the strain hardening rate. So, if I see a, a sharp change in the uh, my strain hardening rate. Okay. And how I am defining the strain hardening rate? I am defining by the slope of this particular curve. Okay. So, at any point I can take the slope. Okay. What is that slope? So, if I take slope here, you can see that strain hardening is more. If I take slope at this point, you can see the slope is coming down. That means, the strain hardening rate is coming down. Okay. And that is given by theta here. So, theta is equal to del sigma by del epsilon versus flow stress. So, if I plot something like this okay, between the flow stress and uh, uh, this uh, strain hardening rate, I should be able to see from the inflection point that where the there is a change in the uh, hardening rate okay, because there the recrystallization must have started okay. and from there we should be able to tell okay, this is my critical strain or critical stress to initiate the uh, recrystallization process in the material. Okay, so, uh, I will take, I uh, will explain it on the uh, monitor itself now. Okay, so, basically you have this single peak curve, okay. this is my epsilon, this is my sigma. Okay. So, this is my sigma p okay. and how can I can find out the sigma p? very simple where the strain hardening or the there is there is no hardening or the slope is 0. Okay. So, d sigma p should be associated with where the d sigma by d epsilon is 0. Okay. The stress associated with that will be equal to sigma p. Okay. So, somewhere here is my sigma p and somewhere here is my epsilon c and stress associated with this is sigma c. Okay. So, first I will plot okay, the flow curve in, in, in another form now. I, I will take the uh, differentiation uh, d, d sigma by d epsilon which is theta. Okay. So, I want to now plot theta versus sigma. Okay. And if I plot that, it will, uh, I, I am just giving you a rough estimate of that. Okay. The flow curve should be something like this. Okay. And you can see that there is a some inflection point at somewhere here, where the slope is changing from one 
uh, type of slope to another type of slope. Okay. So, at that somewhere okay, my slope should be 0 because it is changing the direction from one uh, uh, side to another side. Okay. It, is, it is going like this and then it is changing the direction. Okay. Uh, another interesting thing is that if I want to plot the same curve for a DRV curve, okay, it will be a simple curve like this. Okay. There would not be any inflection point okay. because if you remember the for dynamic recovery, we showed curves like this, okay. some strain hardening and then the uh, steady state condition. Okay. So, on the this type of uh, curve theta versus sigma it will be just one straight line whereas, in recrystallization okay, you will see an inflection point like this. Okay. Now, actually if you see the data which you are getting from, from the machine and that you are plotting that data will be very uh, some kind of this kind of variation will be there, okay. large variation will be there. Okay, we, you, you can find out the slope and just plot it. Okay. So, basically you fit a smooth curve on this kind of very varied data okay. and to plot a, uh, this kind of slope usually we take some polynomial equation. Okay. So, for example, in this case for plotting this particular curve we have taken a polynomial equation of third order. Okay. So, cubic equation basically. Okay. So, it will have some relationship like this okay, sigma cube uh, and the a, b, c, d are constants of material. Okay. And uh, now to find out this inflection point that where actually the it has started okay, where the slope is changing let us again differentiate this also with sigma okay, this particular equation. So, it will be now 3 a sigma square 2 b sigma plus c and d is a constant. So, it will become 0 and I can again differentiate it to get sigma a plus 2 b and again c is a constant. So, it becomes 0. Okay. So, if I plot this the curves. Okay. For example, this d theta by d sigma, okay, it will be come something like this. Okay, so it has some minima here, okay, and this minima will have the slope of this will be zero, obviously. Okay, so this is also plotted as a function of sigma. So where it is the slope of this particular curve between d theta by d sigma and sigma okay, where it is giving you 0 that is the point where it has changed the slope okay, and that is my inflection point. Okay. So, so, this is actually should be now I can say and now see I am putting it as sigma c to be equal to 0. Okay, so, I am putting this particular as 0 okay, and sigma I am changing to sigma c now. So, sigma c becomes uh, b minus b upon 3 a. Okay. So, from these constant I will be no able to find out that what is the critical strain for initiation of recrystallization and correspondingly I can find out what will be the uh, critical strain for uh, uh, initiation of recrystallization. Okay. Another interesting thing is if I plot sigma c as a function of z, okay, you will get a straight line. That means, at different uh, zener holomain parameter or if I increase the zener holomain parameter, my stress to initiate the uh, or critical stress to initiate the recrystallization also goes up. Okay. As you can understand as I am increasing the z that means, I am increasing the strain rate and I am reducing the temperature. So, obviously, my stress to initiate or critical stress to initiate recrystallization will keep going up. Okay. Now, 
uh, same thing we can do for strain also uh, some interesting uh, type of curves are there for strain ok. So, if I plot the same d theta by d sigma, but now as a function of strain ok, I will see some curve like this ok, where this is very close to 0 ok. And uh, this is some strain star and this is the steady state strain ok. And uh, this also gives me about the kinetics of the deformation if I plot ok. So, uh, where it is reaching the steady state of strain ok, at that point I will be completing my recrystallization process. So, this is 1, this is 0 ok and this will be fraction recrystallized ok and this is my time ok and somewhere here it will be able to complete 50 percent of strain ok. So, it will start something like this and complete something like this ok. So, this is a typical S shape curve for the kinetics. So, I will be also able to find out that what is the uh, kinetics of the recrystallization process ok. So, this is what uh, I have already discussed with you ok. So, with this we are able to see that what is the uh, critical strain and critical stress for recrystallization process ok. By doing uh, some simple mathematics here I, I am able to find out that uh, what, uh, what parameters will be able to give me the critical stress and correspondingly there will be a critical strain ok. And if I want to do find out the kinetics of the process ok, then I have to plot against the same d theta by d sigma as a function of a strain rate uh, uh, sorry strain ok and that will give me that what will be the kinetics of the deformation process. And as you can understand that as uh, I am going to increase the temperature ok, the kinetics will be faster ok. So, it will uh, go towards the lower time scale ok. So, this uh, uh, kind of analysis will be able to give us that what will be the uh, critical conditions of deformation to get uh, a Greek crystallized microstructure and what amount of strain I have to impose in the material ok to get this kind of recrystallization. And always as a design uh, if you are designing the process ok, you always have to keep uh, an eye on the, the flow stress part ok. So, suppose uh, we know that uh, at lower temperature it will be the kinetics will be faster ok, but we also know that the stresses will be higher. So, when you are designing a process ok, so the if stresses are higher you are rolling mill every all the parts which are uh, used in the deformation process have to be designed for that kind of stress ok. So, there is always a, a kind of a, a balancing act here to find out the proper condition of deformation to get a recrystallized microstructure in the material ok. So, thank you uh, with this I am ending this lecture.